Kathy. Hi everyone, tonight is Wednesday, November 11th, 2015, and tonight's meeting is for the Open ABE MOOC design team. Uh, we had a conversation before I remembered to turn on the recording, so we'll go back and <laughs> loop in some of that in case uh, um, someone is not able to join us or comes a little bit late. Um, but welcome everybody tonight, and uh, I have um, my screen sharing. Can everybody see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Which is like a Google Doc. Yeah, yep. I can see it. We can see it. So what I'm working off of here, guys, by the way, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but on that original design plan that we had way back when, I, I've been keeping our meet, meeting agenda and notes, and so each time we meet, I have another link here. So I'm under the one for uh, for tonight, so 11-11-2015. Um, so we were just starting to talk. Um, we have a huge deadline uh, looming on December 7th, which crept up on me a little bit <laughs> because I forgot it was November. Um, and so I, t I made contact this week with the Canvas folks just to make sure that I knew what they were looking for. And so if you look on the agenda, I have a link for um, the ca Canvas design checklist. And I'll go ahead and um, open that real quick. Um, this should open a, a Dropbox. Let's see what it looks like here. Do, 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 do. Taking a second. Um, okay, there we go. It's kind of hard to read. Let me close, see if I can close this. Um, and so basically what they're asking for, this is the checklist that the designer at canvas.net will be um, using to evaluate our first um, checkpoint, which again, December 7th. So they're going to be looking for a front page of the course, which I can go ahead and, and prepare, <clears throat> a course overview, which I can go ahead and prepare. And then they also wanted to see, um, let's see, where does it say? Do, 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 somewhere it says in here. And I don't, it's not coming to me right away. She's basically looking for one week of material. And so we were just talking with week one, um, Eric and John, as far as whether their team uh, was up to the challenge. We talked about it a little bit a, a while ago, which one we were gonna do, and they, they do. And so their module has four parts, as we may, may remember. And so I was just asking that we at least get one solid part um, it, that everything is nice and pretty and polished, which will give her a sense of what we're aiming for on all of our modules and also to um, instill in them that, yes, we are serious about completing the remainder of the modules before the, um, the end of the time. So um, with me saying that, do you guys have any other thoughts or comments on that? Um, we can talk afterwards. Um, probably the three of us should meet. To, to figure out how that logistically is going to happen as far as getting it up in Kansas, Canvas. But anything else um, that you wanted to add to that? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Um, so you're going to put it into Canvas. So just real quick, do we have a game plan? Like, if it, do you want like to send links or like, I mean, I guess today someone invited me to the Canvas training course. Huh? Or or yesterday maybe. Yep, yesterday uh, Hillary did. We had I'd invited everybody earlier, and then something got mixed up, and only like three of them worked. But um, anyway, so she helped me get that cleared up. So on the front page of the, this is the document that Jr. put together. If you click on this, everybody should now on um, this thing that says learn.canvas.net course 903. That's actually our course, not the training course, but actually our course. Um, and we can talk about this. I don't know how much experience or exposure you have in Canvas, but definitely taking that training thing helps. It doesn't take a real long time, and you can kind of poke around. You don't have their badges and stuff, but you certainly don't need to, uh, to do it to that extent. Um, so what we need to do is basically, you know, go on to our site, this GED instructional, they're calling it GED instructional design, I don't know why, but instructional design service course, and then um, get those items set up that I was mentioning, the, the front page, the orientation and stuff. Um, so to your question though, Eric, how come, I mean, I guess a couple points. Generally, I, I'm a, an advocate of having one person as the editor, just because then it's one voice and you're making sure everything looks, you know, polished. But to your point, <laughs> how are we going to accomplish that? Um, so I don't know. For this first one, do you guys want to also populate it in here, or do you would you rather just have it on a, a Google Doc that I then do a cut and paste and put it into week one? Well, is there's already kind of like a uh, template here, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to be like changing font or theme or any of this kind of stuff, right? It's just going to 
it just lives in canvas. You don't have that much play with it, correct? Well, they have a like a, a text editor. You're saying within Canvas, how what it looks like? Yeah. Yeah, they do have a text editor. It's pretty. It's pretty basic. It's like working in Google Docs, pretty much, where you can mm -hmm. do links and you can change, you know, headers, heading one, heading two. Um, well, if we could agree to use the default, mm -hmm. then it could be easy enough to go in and add where we put in as students. Your designers. You're in as designers. Designers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right? Of course, there's all different categories of what you can do depending on yeah, exactly. <laughs> how you go in, right? So um, how, how close I don't know. I don't have a good, I don't have a good plan. How close is that your design, uh, is your instruction to what I'm looking at right here in the design plan? Or whatever. Well, I think it's pretty close. Well, do you want me to take a crack at it um, from your part one, just starting to put things in as I see them? Yeah, so like I think, I mean, as far as like the parts and, you know, the structure of it, it's all there. If anything's missing, it's content, right? Okay. Like, I mean, I say content, I just mean like the links out to like, the other websites for them to go review or, you know, there's not a reflection question in there, but there should be. And I need to like, I need to get in. I need to look into canvas to see what the different assignments are to see what might fit. Right. So like we were kind of like, I'd call designing on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> we were rapid prototyping here without knowing what tools were available. Yep. And so so let's, let's do this. Why don't I take a crack at um, your uh, populating Canvas with what you have here? In the meantime, if you guys could take a look at that training uh, materials, which will then give you a really quick overview of how assignments work, um, you know, uh, those types of things, kind of the, the nuts and bolts of Canvas. And then yeah. we meet maybe next Wednesday, or does that work for you guys if just the two, the three of us meet next Wednesday to, to talk about it? Is that the, yeah, I think I, I'm available, the 18th. Does that work for you, John? In the evening, because uh, we, yeah. we're doing, um, we have like three oral, comp exams with PhD students all lined up on next Wednesday, back to back to back. So the evening of next Wednesday would work, not during the day. Okay, so like seven o'clock Eastern? Yeah, I, I think that, that we can pull that off. Okay. Yeah. Jennifer, okay. I, I, it may make sense just for your ease, and Eric, you can pipe in on this too. Sure. Can we share our Google Doc with Jennifer, Eric? It's a little easier to f follow what do you think agreed yeah Jennifer we, we Eric <laughs> and I were working off of a Google Doc and I think that that may be easier for you to follow and start populating um, in regards to starting to put stuff in for part one okay sounds good and Camille um, she said she's kind of confused we have assessments for the goals I'm not sure what that question is right in reference to um, Camille, what we're talking about right now is we just need to get um, one one week's or one module in up, up in Canvas for them to be able to um, do a quick evaluation of like kind of a design evaluation, formative evaluation of us. I'm not sure what your question. I don't know if you have audio or. Um, um, okay, yeah. So John, let's let's do that. So if you want to share that, and we can talk about. I don't want to belabor the point now. Yeah. We, can, we can definitely, um, you know, the three of us send emails and stuff around. Yeah, you know, what? I think I know what Camille's trying to say, but I think I think that she's asking what the assignment slash assessment is for the people who are taking the MOOC. Yeah. Oh. So I, hi, Jennifer. I'm just hi. asking. I'm from the instructor point of view. I'm looking to see, and you're going to put one module up, and then I'm hearing that content is not there. But if we don't know how we're assessing them, then you wouldn't know their content yet. So if we know how the, how we're going to assess them, you have the goals up. I saw that. I didn't see any like how are you planning to know how they're going to achieve those goals. 
Yeah, I think these guys were saying they have a, um, you, you guys have a separate design document that you're also working on that hasn't been uploaded. uploaded. Is that right, you guys? Yeah, that's part of it. And, and the other part is a little bit of the philosophy for the people who are going to be taking this, right? So like for this first part, like these are adults that are going to be volunteering. So we weren't trying to quiz people. Right, right. right? Yes, like, I suppose it doesn't have to be quizzes, but how are you going to measure that you've achieved the goals for whatever you're setting about in terms of the move? What are we trying to achieve from the move? Okay. Um, yeah, and we, we won't spend too much time in this, um, but we'll, we'll just kind of give you a quick over overview. But so the MOOC actually, the, the real main deliverables that the students will be doing will kick in in week four or module four, and that's when they do a written design plan, um, which will then be followed by a self-evaluation of it, followed by a prototype, followed by a formative evaluation, followed by turning in the deliverables. So that's like the real okay. project-based piece of it. What they're doing in these early work uh, piece of weeks is to really get their heads around the needs, the goals, the learners, the, um, the standards, um, give them some, um, Felice has a unit on um, just before they do the proposal of what the, um, like Meryl's first principles of instruction. Yeah, I read all of that, Jennifer, but uh, okay, so I'll tell you what my background is. I do these all the time in my institution. That's what my job is. And the thing is that if I'm delivering it, I'm excited to see that these are what each week, these are what the learners have to get each week. And in order to get that, I need to know how to measure that they've gotten it. Whether it is they write a letter, write it, they write, yeah, I, I got it, they do a tick, or whether they do a formative assessment of it. Right. And way, it, and it will, whatever it is. It will be a that tick. Is, it, 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 yeah. will, it will be a tick. Um, and we also have, um, and John is um, probably going to talk, talk about this as far as it, how it relates to his. Um, he's doing um, individual reflections. So right. every week they'll have individual reflections that they're completing. And then to your point within Canvas, exactly. There is a tick when you finish the module, basically, that you've completed right. the reading. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. So all I was asking is that because people said they didn't know when the assessments were coming. So I got confused that because before I look at my content, I know how I'm going to assess. So if it's with a tick or with a reflection, then you fill in the content thereafter. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, that's what got me confused because yeah. if you didn't have the assessment, I didn't know how you could get the content. Yeah. The, these first couple of units are a little bit different in that. And, and we, we talked about this uh, when we first started, we normally would have the learners do a learner assessment um, and, and develop their own personas. But these are more, unfortunately, a little bit more presentation and display of material rather than um, true instructional modules. The first few. First few. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Sorry for disturbing. All right. Okay. No, no, that's great. Good, good comments. Those, those are good comments. Um, okay. Let's go back over to, is, so Eric, did that kind of address, you said you were, uh, had the same question with, with Camille. You're good with that? Oh, no, I didn't have a, I didn't have a question about it. I was just trying to clarify for oh, Camille. okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. She um, really needed my help though, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. One, another thing. So now kind of getting into kind of a, my brain dump of all the things that I've, I, I talked to a lot. Fortunately, I was able to talk to a lot of you folks at AACT last week. And so a lot of things kind of came up on the fly and I just wanted to think through some of this as a group. Um, originally when we, we're talking about things. We very much had it aligned to days of the week, um, which I'm trying to find here real quick. So for example, the schedule um, and this idea that people would um, only be able to see content as, as things progressed. And I don't think, I don't think Jessica's here yet, um, but she brought up a good point. She thinks we might lose a lot of people if, if we really baby them that to that degree. And she liked the idea that we would open up all the modules and encourage everybody clearly to, you know, go through one, one through two, so that they're able to see um, what they're going to be doing in all of the modules. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of get a sense for how do people, how does that sit with people if we didn't necessarily stick to um, a schedule? Meaning that we don't turn a module on at a certain point in time during the week. I think um, like the free flow navigation of the content is fine. Like if, if I'm thinking about a, a print version of it, yeah, I have the textbook on day one and I know what all the readings are so I can do it. 
but if there are if we're using any discussions then those things um, are a little bit better suited to be um, to have time constraints yeah I agree and then um, yeah Camille saying open all modules and then to your point assessments can definitely be as we're talking about you know the, the written design proposal the pr prototype or whatever will be checkpoints in time you know due dates for those um, where they have to get those done. Um, did anybody at this point, and I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if everybody's on yet. Um, I don't see J um, I don't see Josh either. Um, no, that, that was JR. I knew you were JR, but I don't think I saw J J um, Josh isn't on, and, and I don't think um, Jessica. But, um, oh, <laughs> Stacy, I see you. <laughs> but how, does anybody have any thoughts on the d discussion piece? I don't think we've really thought through how we would be using the group discussion feature. Does anybody at this point think they will be using that in their module? Nobody is, you don't think? I think, uh, again, this is based on a, a conversation I had with Josh uh, quite a while ago, is that the discussion tool might have been um, a mechanism for peer review in week five, or I guess module five. Okay. Okay, we'll talk to him about that. And uh, I also, hey, um, hello, good night. And um, this is for Liz. I also, I was using the peer um, peer review as a discussion board. Okay. Okay. So again, we'll we'll think about that then in the con. And I'm bringing this up in the context again of um, of dates. So we'll think through that. We got we got we'll think through that piece up. I've got a little note on that. Um, so other than that, um, we'll op so the, I guess we're making the decision now. We'll go ahead and open everything up for review. The things we'll need to contemplate then and nail down are exact due dates of assignments and then also discussions just to make sure we have everybody um, looped back in at the same time. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay, this has come up a couple times. Copyright, as far as our work. So this is again, <laughs> how our work is going to be licensed. And so I am 100% fine with my work being CC by. Does anybody, you know, kind of like a speak now, forever hold your peace. Is there anybody who disagrees with this and wants their work in particular to be CC by um, and then non-commercial? And maybe JR, JR, <laughs> Do you want to take a first crack at that in case maybe uh, I'm making an assumption that um, everybody knows what I'm talking about? I think um, one thing I, I ran into very recently um, in terms of uh, different Creative Commons licenses and them being problematic um, is more on the uh, on the lesson plan side of things. So I, I've been thinking this week about if our MOOC participants are making lesson plans and if they're... Uh, say being being forced to um, use the CC BY license, uh, then there's some some complications around um, if they found a, an existing lesson and wanted to adapt it, they're possibly going to be restricted by what the existing license is. So, for example, if the existing one was um, BY non-commercial and share alike, then they wouldn't be able to adapt and build on it in order to complete our task. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know I made a comment in there about that. It also causes some restrictions around um, uh, compatibility. So if they're mixing two or three things, um, and there are some restrictions that way with the licenses. Um, but most mostly, I was thinking about uh, as, you know one of our participants finding one that they wanted yeah. to build upon, right. um, and then not being able to kind of submit it to the final piece because it it didn't meet the right. Um, license okay um, I totally agree and that you know that's unfortunate I don't know there's really not a great workaround than, than that right um, so yeah we'll have to think through that as far as their modules it, but as far as like our modules is everybody okay that there may be some day down the road someone would take our work and use it commercially which I can't imagine would ever happen and the reason I like to avoid the non-commercials just to keep it as open as possible to avoid what what JR is just talking about is to make our work as adaptable as possible in the future. Um, does anybody disagree? Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna cross, cross this out. So our work then will be CC by, I just had a little discussion with one of the subject matter experts and she was just saying, um, she, 
she tends to go the non-commercial, but I, I just can't imagine someone taking our work and selling it, but maybe, maybe, and maybe one day I'll regret this decision. The, um, the, the non-commercial one is particularly tricky um, because some of the, the guidance uh, articles around using CC licensed works uh, even indicates that uh, you can't print it and, you know, recover any funding uh, for the cost of printing. Like it's that, is that restrictive or can be considered that restrictive. Um, so it can be a really ugly, nasty um, uh, condition for a CC license. Most times it's not going to be that restrictive, but uh, it has the opportunity to go that way. Yeah, and, and my whole thought has always been, say someone at like, for example, Grace Centers of Hope wants to charge for their GED training, would that, kind of go getting what you're saying, would that preclude them from being able to, you know, sell a handbook of materials or whatever it may be, um, you know, to recoup their costs or whatever it may be. Um, but that's where I, the subject matter experts said I was taking it too far and <laughs> that doesn't, it, that's not, wouldn't be covered, but okay, so I, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to announcement and promotion. Those of you that were at AACT know I had a stack of um, promotional, just a little handout card. I got rid of um, about 450 of those. <laughs> so we've started the bandwagon. So this became very real to me, at least last week, as we started rolling this out and talking to everybody at AACT. Um, and also, when you have a chance, um, it's really ugly, but I threw up a first draft on our um, Designers for Learning website actually still in the studio as a draft um, it's kind of an announcement I think JR you brought this up probably right at the get-go is like we should probably also focus on some degree of attention on um, how we're going to roll this out and promote it so if you guys wouldn't mind taking a peek at that and, and give me some feedback I'd really appreciate it it's pretty ugly and pretty basic at this point um, and then also in terms of promotion Geo and the other group is making us a logo for the adult learning zone which will go up on the MOOC and then we'll have that branded also in the OER Commons um, I'm checking to make sure that we can use the Canvas logo, which I think we can in our promotional materials. And then does anybody have any um, preference to what our hashtag will be for like social media and stuff? I, we, I've been using this open ABE. Does anybody else have a thought? Oh, and, okay, Camille, great, thanks. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't have a thought, but is, now, I'm familiar with the term GED. I wasn't really familiar with the term ABE until I joined this group. Um, is that something that is a keyword that be searched easily? Um, you know what? I, you know, let's talk that let's maybe they bring that up with the SMEs because uh, when yeah. I'm with them, they tend to, they tend to say ABE or adult ed. Um, Versus just GED because there are obviously other pathways to high school equivalency, you know, mm -hmm. college or you know, courses or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. All right, so let's 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 table. That. I'm just trying to think, you know, like if if you want <laughs> if you want maximum <laughs> right, right, right. Mileage, you you want to have the right the right keywords to get the right people there. Okay, you know what? I'll drop an email to the SMEs. They'll have a good opinion on that, I think. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think idea. that's kind of a point. I don't even think, I mean, maybe I'm making a bigger deal out of it, but it just seems like we need a hashtag to kind of brand our social presence. Uh, I, I don't think it's a small point. I mean, it, you know, when, when you search for things, when people already have those letters, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there um, uh, there is another, you know, there's um, uh is there a D4L out there? There is. Hashtag. They're ra they're rappers, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Jason, Jason loves that one. That story. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like that. You know, if if you're really trying to like stand out, or if you want people when they're searching, you know, we, let's let's give them words that they can bite into. Um, unless I'm just I, I could be ignorant though about A B E G E D sort of stuff. So. No, that's good. And it looks like uh, JR just took a, took a peek. So it looks like both, <laughs> both are good options. So okay. we'll, we'll, put it, we'll put it to a vote and, and, and we'll, we'll confirm that um, later. And then this um, next piece the, um, came up in quite a bit of detail in, this, in our adult learning zone meeting that we had uh, two weeks ago, Thursday. This, um, this WAPIA lesson planning and Felice has been um, doing a great job on Merrill's first principles as a way of, of framing the um, actual instructional, you know, 
the, the steps of the instructional process. Um, and, and Felice, if you just take a peek at this link that I put in there, if we could think of some way to incorporate, and it doesn't have to be a big deal, but um, if we could somehow do a compare and contrast of the lesson planning in this WAPIA, and basically, it's, if you look at it, it's almost the same process where you've got, you know, presentation of materials, um, you have some type of, you start out with some type of activa activation activity. Um, but the SMEs brought up a good point that the adult basic educators are not going to be familiar with Merrill's first principles, but they are going to be very familiar with this um, lesson planning following this WAPIA lesson planning guide. So if, if you take a peek at that, and that probably will affect your lesson as well as, um, as Jessica's. Um, is that okay, Felice? I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure, definitely. I, I can compare and contrast kind of, like a little sections, maybe little bubbles. That'd be that, great. Yeah, I can highlight the similarities and the differences. I will definitely do that. Yeah, and, and once you really look at them, they're very, very similar. As far as it, um, and then just a suggestion to all the um, all the designers. Uh, has anybody purchased or or do you own the Delft guide, um, the the designing guide? It is outstanding, by the way, and so it really offers a great overview of the design process. And I've been I've borrowed pieces of it when I talk about prototyping and evaluation and things like that. Um, and unfortunately, their materials are not Creative Commons licensed because it would have been great to be able to snag pieces of it to use in, our, um, in ours. But there are two courses. One is an edX and another one is an open course on open courseware um, where they, they're, they go through the, pro the de design process steps. Um, and this is just kind of a, an aside for your life as designers. <laughs> this is a great guide. But if you are kind of stuck and trying to think of things, um, you know, examples of, of a design process, these are some really great examples. Um, again, a prototyping, evaluation, um, how to come up with your design requirements, things like that. Um, all right, now getting into some kind of um, the devil in the details here as far as the Canvas development. As I mentioned before, there's this training course. If you would take it, I think it would really help as we're going through this development phase that's coming up. Now we're kind of finishing the design piece, going to putting things up on Canvas. It'll give you a good sense of what our options are um, uh, on Canvas. And if you can't log into the training module, let me know, as Eric said, Hillary sent out uh, reminders or whatever they were this week to give everybody access. So if you didn't get it, um, just drop me an email that you didn't. I'd appreciate that. Um, and then we kind of talked a little bit about this before, and I'm, I'm really struggling with this because this whole idea of migrating to Canvas. I, th I think this first one that we do with, with John and Eric will be a good test case. Um, Hillary very much strongly <laughs> encouraged it just to be one or two people. Um, because when you get more hands in it, it, you know, formatting and everything gets all wacky. Um, but I think, think that is then conditional upon us making sure that the draft we have someplace is truly cut and paste, where someone can just take your work and cut and paste it without having to do a lot of editorial, you know, moving of stuff around. Um, so again, let's let's focus on this first module one as our test case. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then in terms of asset development um, and where, how we're going to store things, we talked a little bit about this um, with, I think Jessica raised the, um, the, the Vimeo suggestion. But per Canvas, if you read through their instructions, please don't create any assets that are flash-based because then that you know, pretty much precludes the use of any mobile devices. Um, yeah, and Jay, <laughs> no flash, boo. Um, and then if you want to know what is available to us as far as integration, Canvas pointed us to this eduappcenter.com, and maybe that will spark some some creativity in you. For example, their Canvas right now is very big on this tool called Zaption, and basically it allows you within a, within a video to be able to prompt for questions, and they have a very s seamless, smooth integration where if you create it in Zaption, you can just embed it very easily within, um, within Canvas. So I, I think Stacy actually brought Stacy and Felice, maybe we're talking about that in the last um, session. Like, what are our development options? And so, I, I guess, like I said, the best thing I can say at this point is point you to this Edu App Center um, and try not to get crazy with using Flash. But otherwise, if you're you know interested in creating some short snippet of video, um, that you know that's probably a good good direction to go. And does anybody have experience or preference as far as would we store things in YouTube or Vimeo? 
Um, anybody have any pref preference on that? I don't have any ex experience really with Vimeo. I use pre usually much, pretty much use YouTube. No thoughts? No preferences? So if we made a decision that we're going to use YouTube, you're good for the most part? Yeah, I, th I think I'm I'm good with that. Um, th is somebody's section like particularly heavy on video? Well, I, I so far nobody's you know proposed anything, but I think as we like I said, we're kind of switching from the design phase to the more the development phase. Devel but, yeah, I think I've, I've got maybe three or four, but like they already exist and they're all on YouTube, so the embed codes will be fine. Yeah, yeah those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, Jessica's not here. She mentioned Vimeo is their preferred one at Penn State, and I, I, without her here, I don't really know why. But <laughs> um, And then I also created, um, and I'll put a link, I created a, um, I have Dropbox in here, but I'm going to get rid of that already, in Google Drive. If you do start getting a bunch of assets that, um, for example, some images, image files or PDF files or things like that, if we could store them in this common drive that we've got going. Um, let me try to find it real quick. Um, it's under here. I don't know if you can see on my screen. Canvas MOOC assets final and I've got each of the weeks laid out. So we have one central repository so we can then look to the spa space to find any images or any PDFs or whatever it may be. Uh, I'm sorry, this is so boring, but we just have to get through some of this logistics stuff. And I think, um, without Jessica here, she and I talked a little about, bit about badges. I'm going to skip through this thing on the learner interactions for a second and talk a little bit about badges. Um, Canvas very much recommends Canvas badges. It's their LTI tool. It integrates with all the big names, um, so it's not going to you know, tie our hands too much. But if you're weak, if you're contemplating having your week being part of our badging, um, you may want to spend some time looking at the Canvas Badge LTI um, section of the Canvas website, and it'll give you in instructions on how to do it. Um, we also talked when we were at ACT with a group of us that the idea of rather than if you, for example, want your module to have a badge associated with it, make it a piece of the badge. So they're ultimately trying to complete one badge and your section is a piece of the pie. And um, there's some, the thought behind that is it, it means more to then complete a badge if rather than getting a, a slew of like little tiny badges that don't mean as much. Um, and so that from a logistical scan standpoint, that's something I need to go back to Canvas and say, how can that be accomplished? Because I think they pretty much go by, unfortunately, <laughs> you finish a model, module, you get a badge. So we'll have to think through that a little bit. Can I ask a quick question about the, sure, the yeah. yeah. So um, in the overall like framework, I've, um, there was like one for each of the five weeks like originally, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's say that you go through the five weeks, you get the five pieces, you get the badge. Where does that badge live? Inside of Canvas? Or is that like something you kick out to LinkedIn? Like what, what's the benefit of it for the the people doing yeah it. the way it works you can get these backpacks and so like you can like I th what is it I'm just using Mozilla it. has their open backpack and the canvas badge LTI tool is compatible with it yeah you can use you you say the words <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, so like I've I've actually been on the the receiving end um, Jenny Heyman had a MOOC a couple of years ago that they had made uh, badges for and um, the Mozilla open backpack you sign up and um, you can link to it from your about me or your LinkedIn. Um, I think I just read somewhere recently that Mozilla's actually not got any, anyone in house taking care of the backpack or their badges anymore. Um, and that it's, it's gone to the community, but, um, yeah, that's about all I know about badges right now. Yeah, um, I did check out some of these resources. And, and to your point, Eric, I don't, personally know why anyone would want a badge, but I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have that's to That's not what it. I said. <laughs> but I guess that, that, that's my, that's my editorial. Don't, uh, don't put words into my mouth. Yeah, I, won't put, uh, I, will, I will own those words. Those are my words. But if you <laughs> no, no, no. It, Look, I, not too long ago, I took a, a Linda course, and when I finished it, it gave me like a certification on LinkedIn. 
right? It gave me a little badge on my LinkedIn page. Uh And so that's what I was curious about. Like if it only sits in canvas, you know, like that might not be meaningful to some people, but for some people, let's say they're classroom teachers or something, Mm -hmm. they might be able to like turn this around and be like, Oh yeah, the, I'm doing this thing. Can I get recertification point? But they, but if the badges are just in canvas, then no one can see it. And that's like a, a tricky sort of thing. So, but that's, that's the only thing I was, it could benefit some people if they were able to show that badge to some, someone. Isn't it credly also JR where a lot of people will pull their stuff back. Um, here's one. Yeah. Credly. Kind of what you're saying, I took a class and I think, here you go, integration with LinkedIn. Here you go, Eric. Um, so so once it's, I think, in this, uh, the LTI, they can, you can pull it back, you know, to Mozilla Open Badges, um, looks like LinkedIn or whatever it may be. So we'll have to, Jessica was very, sounded very interested in running with us. I was very happy with that. Um, <laughs> so I guess from our standpoint, though, what we really need to do, and kind of ties back even to what Camilla was um, saying um, earlier, this all then ties into assessment. And so right now, I, I think we had the badging chat checkpoints being, and John, this may be something uh, for the individual reflections. Um, if they complete all their individual reflections, that might be a piece of the pie. If they submit their design plan, that's a piece of the pie. If they conduct the peer evaluation and then the final deliverable, those are the ones that I came up with as badging checkpoints. Um, and then tied to that, we've always offered a certificate of completion, or actually we called it a letter of I think it's a letter of recognition, I guess, um, in other cohorts. And this is actually pretty easy to do. Um, it can be automated within Canvas. So once they, as Camilla was mentioning earlier, they hit the last checkbox that they've done everything, it just fits out of a certificate, which may mean something to somebody. It's more of a, yeah, I completed things versus an necessarily an ass- assessment of the quality of their work. Um, but it's more just, yeah, I, I completed the requirements of the, of the class. So. Your participation ribbon. Exactly. <laughs> Your participation. <laughs> Don't underestimate that. <laughs> I know. It all, all this makes my skin crawl a little bit. So, <laughs> but, um, okay. So now, now to the meet, now that we only have 20 minutes left, um, did you guys want to spend some time going over, um, your units or specific questions you may have as far as what, any input you might want from us or the others? Should we just go down the list? How about how, unit one? You want to just give us a quick rundown of, of where you're at and, and what you need help on or what you're thinking through? With unit one right now, um, we send out the personas to all the SMEs. They had a lot of enthusiasm. They really liked the personas um, and they gave some great feedback on what was missing. Um, the challenge now is taking what they gave us as feedback and we sent out five personas. We had five to start off with and with their feedback, we could easily have eight personas, but that's way too many. Um, We want to be right around six. So a couple of the things that they said were missing that would be helpful. We can add into a specific persona. There were two personas that really deserve to be personas in themselves. Um, one being um, a 17-year-old that just quit high school and then two years later has decided what a big mistake that was. Um, and we really didn't have that type of persona. Another one would be someone that, like, for instance, a migrant worker um, that has had all kinds of interruption in schooling and may have a challenge with the English language. And that's a really important one, too. So the goal right now is to tweak out the personas. And um, as I said earlier, before everyone came on to you and Eric, that will be done this weekend. And um, with the tweaking out of the personas week, part one will really be in good shape um, with the activities that we want to do and and having these, um, we're going to do an activity where you first just get an understanding of why we're even doing this. And then we're going to dig right into presenting the personas and allowing the, um, the participants to really start to um, have empathy 
um, towards these personas, and that's what we really want. We want to get to empathetic design where the participants immerse themselves into the personas, they connect to the personas, then the very important part is then detach themselves from the personas, because this is where they start coming up with their ideas. They start to really say, okay, this is how I could help this person, or this is where the design can go. Um, so I really feel confident that part one is really going to flow nicely. And I think that in the next you know, week or so, with the three of us working to get part one ready, then part two, three, and four are just going to just roll right off that. So okay. I think that we're in really good shape. So when you were mentioning activities, um, so are you thinking that will be the individual reflection activities? Um, the activity for part one, Jennifer, was the idea of showing them an image um, of some type of image and then having them kind of walk through the phases of empathy to try to, you know, immerse themselves in the image, try to figure out what's going on with it. And when they get a good feel for that, then we would actually sh present the personas to them and have them do that exercise again. Um, so um, part one I see has a big reflection part in it um, where the participants really sit back and say, okay, I want to start thinking how this is going to help. Um, like I had talked to you, um, ACT, I think that the re reflection part for all of the weeks um, is really going to be important. And I, and I think it should be structured in the sense that each week is thinking about what happened the week prior, what's going to happen the next week. And if the reflection can sort of be a point where the participants can sit back and go, wow, you know, I just learned about the need, the context, and the learners, and how is this now going to help me going into week number two? And then, like, week number two is actually saying, you know, okay, what did I gain from week one? How am I going to use that week two? And then how am I going to use what I just learned in week two for week three? So I really think that's where the reflection can become really, really um, dynamic and powerful for the participants. So then the, the, let's, let's kind of just, as a group, kind of think this through. So if we have this idea of a thread of reflection going through, I think we were pretty much con feeling good about the idea. We'd, when they started this section, they would need to, s to have a Google account so they could start a Google Doc, right? And then the question prompts are going to reside within the lesson, right? And then they'll use their Google Doc as their means of documenting their reflection activity. Is that right? Yeah, I mean... You know, the, I think the challenge there, I think that we've talked about, yes, and, and conceptually, that's how it worked, Jennifer. I think that the, the thing that we all were throwing around is, you know, how do you make it so easy that they actually reflect? You know, we know that there's some challenges within Canvas to do reflections, so now we're asking them to go to a Google Doc um, to do the reflections, um, and then they're going to have to share that Google Doc with us because obviously we, we want to be able to see the reflection so logistically what is the best way of doing that so that people will participate in it yeah you know john to piggyback on that i was kind of dragging my feet on this because i needed to see what was inside of canvas yeah um i you know you're talking a little bit about like the um you know is there going to be discussion you know, this sort of thing. It's perfectly reasonable to use a discussion board for some of this reflection so people can, you know, one of the things, especially about week one, is that you have so many people with different students, mm -hmm. right? That's why we have the personas. So it might be interesting to see what the other people are reflecting on. Like, <laughs> yeah, my students are, you know, they're they're from coming from prison or, mm -hmm. you know, my students are 17 years old. They haven't been out of school. Right. So like if you had a discussion board and the timing of it might not matter. I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yeah. It's because everyone, if everyone's starting in week one, then you would be able to see, right. Like what other people are, are doing. And we could even like prompt them into, well, you know, after you do yours, right, you know, comment on someone else's or, you know, like see how yours is similar or different or, um, but it, like I said, I was dragging my feet on that because I don't, 
know the tech exactly inside Canvas. So I didn't want to pitch something that I figure there's something like that in there. But yeah, yeah. And that's those are the two, you know, the two things and the pros and cons of, you know, using the discussion board is, is more of a group forum. The idea of having an individual Google Doc would be more your, you know, from a reflection standpoint, it's more of an individual thing that you're just you don't necessarily, you're not considering your audience, that other mm -hmm. people are reading it. Um, and so I don't, you know, John, what are your thoughts on that as far as, because given that this is going to be kind of a research thing for you as well, right? So if this resides in a discussion forum, how does that change your ability to then track their, their uh, reflections over time? It changes it, but I'm all about wanting to ensure that <laughs> they, um, making it easy that they will reflect <laughs> you know what i mean so for me it's, it's, it's the actual reflections and i'd rather be the person that's got to adapt to be able to track it versus um setting up something that's easy to track and nobody uses it you know what i mean jennifer right exactly yeah you know i i always have fear inside of a course when you make someone do something in a third party piece of software yeah um you're going to, you're going to lose, you're, you're going to lose someone in that process. There's going to be someone in there that's like, I don't even have a Gmail account. Right. <laughs> right? right. Like there's, it happens all the time. Yeah. And we are going to push them to Gmail for the prototype at this point, I think. Yeah. But again, that's yet to be confirmed. But and JR, I see your question there. Um, does Canvas have a journal um, or course blog tool? Uh, when I, when I pitched this idea to Hillary, she just said it gets a little messy when, when a lot of the stuff we're talking about when we're talking about hundreds of students participating <laughs> a lot of the same things we're just saying here you know you got to track it how do you see where it is and are they you know so but let's let okay for right now we're inching toward decisions here for, the, for, for module one for our draft let's use it as we're going to use reflection um, tool the discussion board as our reflection tool for part one how does that sound for our, our immediate need? And then we'll keep this idea of a journal in Canvas or a course blog possibility, or maybe the, the Google Docs in our, the yeah. back of our mind. And I would say too, John, as far as like your, your research, if you had a hundred Google Docs that you know. had to open up as opposed to having everything in one place where you're just opening and shutting drop down menus, yep. the, the feasibility of that, I, that's rough. That that's that's tough. No, I I agree with you, Eric. And like I said, my for my research purposes, it's it's getting the reflections that I want to do, and and I I will adapt. Um, um, and I agree with you. Um, one hundred Google Docs would would be very difficult <laughs> versus looking at a discussion board. And you know, and it you know, and again, it'd be a limitation of this first study too on how it was done. I mean, but I I really think that. That it's still great feedback. So I'm with you, Jennifer, and I, I that let's let's for part one focus on that we're going to utilize what Canvas has, and then once we get to learn more about it, if it really is going to be a problem, then it is. I think also if we can, if Canvas actually has something that's helpful, I know that Jr. and Stacy, you know, had talked about the fact of groups of people kind of building relationships with one another. And, you know, when you have a situation where people can see things, um, you know, and they might be able to say, hey, you know, this Eric keeps on putting some interesting things up. And I, I, Eric's point, I think, is a really important point that it's kind of like how Eric and I have gone about this whole thing is that everyone is going to, like, at the end, if I've gone through this, it would seem to me that I'm going to be designing a learning lesson for a particular persona in a particular area, be it an urban area, a rural area, a prison area, something that, you know, that I'm, I know. And to be able to create these synergies of people saying, wow, this person and I are kind of on the same boat here mm -hmm. and we have the same experiences, I think that could be super powerful for people. So, I mean, I loved JR and Stacey's idea about the potential of people building relationships as they're moving through week to week. And if that happens, I mean, we've done our job in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and, you know, um, kind of circling back to some of the things we we're talking about as far as goals, you, a macro goal of why we're even doing this MOOC, <laughs> let's think about big picture. 
we had a very, very touching moment, I thought, didn't you think, um, John, during our one of our panel discussions on this project, and it, how, how sad it is that we were in an academic conference with you know, literally hundreds of academics in it, focused on education, and there wasn't one session on adult education and this, this issue, this huge social cause of all, you know, millions of people not having their um, high school degree. So I think that's why I think this idea of the discussion board, keeping that community piece of it is important because I think hearing people's experiences where they work it kind of look, looks to our bigger, a bigger picture of why we're even doing the MOOC, right? At least to me. All right. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Okay, I think um, it's, we just have um, JR, Stacy, and Felice here, so I guess we just have units two and three. If we could get through those in the next 10 or so minutes, that would be fantastic. So JR and Stacy, do you guys want to kind of update us on where you are or raise any questions you may have on your units? Um, actually, I do. Um, I don't have mine posted. Um, is it possible for me to share what I have, um, share my screen? Sure. Because um, I just have it. Um, I just kind of have it laid out and maybe you guys can help me out with whether this is where we're all coming from. So let me, let me see if I can share this. Um, yeah. Did you, you got the little button, right? Yeah, I got it. Um, it is this one. I guys make sure. I think it's this one. Okay. Are you seeing, um, it says week two first design decisions. Oh, wait, sorry. If I would share it, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yep, I see it. <laughs> okay. Yep. So we were starting off um, with a module overview. And again, I, I'm going, I have Canvas on my other screen here to see what type of reflection. I was going a lot with um, uh, let's see, establishing like the, foc the focus and the scope. I did do a little bit of research with the lesson plan templates. Um, and so I went through and I just am generally talking about where to start, you know, when you're starting to create this lesson plan, where do you start? They just received um, information um, on the types of people, the, everything that they went through with um, unit one, they took a deeper dive in the, the learner's needs, their problems or opportunities, and now it's time to implement the, those needs um, into a plan of action that's going to, you know, benefit them. Um, so, sorry about that. Um, so, um, so, for example, um, I give an example of a, a, a lesson template, um, and I incorporated both that whippy, is that how you say that? I Wh think whippy so. Up? Oh, yeah. great. Okay, so you're covering yeah. this. I don't know. Exactly. So, so I took, I didn't take um, the other one. I took like a general mm -hmm. one that, there's so many out there, and I, com mm -hmm. I combined it to try and hit all of them. So eventually there'll be a link to that they open that up they'll see what goes into the focus and the scope what what is it that i need to think about now that i have an idea of who i am teaching to where i'm teaching at um now how do i start to develop this so things to consider of course um the timing and logistics of the lesson who the students are situal constraints learning objectives and these are things that they should have been thinking about from the first um, module um, because that's what they mm -hmm. had already been just discussing. So now they're going to start to really put it all together. I'm starting to go down just basically talking about um, how do we focus a lesson. Um, an example of coming up with just a broad a, a topic. What topic do you want to even discuss? And then a general goal. Like what is it you know that you're hoping? Um, what target do you want to reach or achieve? in this particular lesson that you are going to create. So I give a little example of that, then move into, um, I'm gonna write a little bit more, and then another thing would be another read, or I'm not sure how they, the assets are described in Canvas, but I'll figure it out. Um, They're like pages. It's oh, like a page. You, yeah, you create okay. a page and then you can just link out to it from you okay. know, the main thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then going into the learning objectives, just what is a learning objective? And then, you know, how do I create one um, kind of thing? What should they look like? They should be student centered, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll continue all of that. Um, how are they measured? And then, um, also making sure that when you're creating those learning outcomes that they are they are uh, um, 
that you can create an assessment from that. What is it that you're looking for? So we move then into um, assessing a learning outcome, describe what it is, and then so and so. Then we move into aligning it to a standard. So now if they have that blank template started to fill out uh, mm -hmm. with a topic area um, and with, you know, at least thinking about these things, now we start getting into the standards. What are they? Where do they come from? Um, we start going right into the college and career readiness standards um, and the core common core standards. So they are a bit complicated. It's hard to, to go through them and understand them. So basically what I do is I, I, as I ask them specifically, you know, what are the standards? Where do they come from? Why are they even important? I have my objectives. Why do I need to put it to a standard? So the pros and cons nationally of where standards stand, <laughs> I guess you could say, um, mm -hmm. how people feel about them, blah, 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 keep going down. They're just a read. Then I give them a link to the um, standards. We open those up and we start to talk about um, how to understand them, how to read them, mm -hmm. how um, all the different types that there are um, just in language. Um, and then, I mean, just in, um, uh, yeah, English uh, language and then writing and then, you know, how it approaches to history and science and tech and blah, blah, blah. So going from there into understanding them, um, the EL, ELA, just kind of what I just described, the groupings and how we're going to concentrate on the E group, which is the 9 through 12. Um, and then how do I interpret when you look at that chart and here's what it looks like down here It's pretty confusing if you've never seen one before um, mm -hmm. So the top of course are the ang are the um, grade levels across the top the A through E the E is where we're going to concentrate um, And then the the CCR is basically an anchor um, It's the main um, It's the main standard and then underneath of that you have um, supporting standards. So in this particular standard for CCR, the CCR Anchor 1 in, I think it's language, um, EL, uh, I think it's the language one, I'm not positive. Um, you'll see in that column that there's supporting standards underneath of that. So, you know, how to read those, how to read the citations, what do they mean? Um, you know, you have your R I R L one period one. And so I go into how to interpret that so that they can now start to um, say, okay, this was my topic. This is what I wanted to teach and then um, find the standard. And then sometimes the, the sub, the um, supporting standards are right there. So they can okay. just kind of grab those. Um, then I was going to give them like a little activity um, like for and give them an example like the R1 um, RL 910 stands for reading informational text and also reading language text grades 9 through 10 standard one it supports standard one mm -hmm. and so on so I didn't even give an example of the math but that one's completely different so but anyway I was gonna have a little activity to clarify their understanding of the citations and maybe uh -huh. just ask them like okay here's what does this stand for you know what I mean and just uh -huh. go through to clarify that they understand the citation mm -hmm. then moving into now that I, I get it now that I understand the anchor I understand the supporting ones how do I actually implement that into the lesson plan that I kind of have you know the scope of my lesson mm -hmm. so if they had done some objectives um, just how are we now going to take those objectives and place them in so I have a template that it's it basically um, you fill it in with you take the um, resources that you have the tasks that you're asking them to do the objectives and then you kind of go backwards and then you match it up to the standard Perfect. You know what I mean so mm -hmm. that will all be explained and then a little reflection how do you you know it's a little practice basically um, mm -hmm. give them an example of one and then have them give them a blank one with a full lesson plan already created and ask them now to fill in the blanks to see if this lesson that you are if you're evaluating aligns um, and is ready to be implemented you know mm -hmm. what I mean mm -hmm. so, is this, am I going in the right direction though? Is this kind of what we wanted? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And you, you know, you took a very complex, it, it is. The standards look 
it's just a chart, but then like oh my gosh. all the layers it, to them. Yes. Oh my goodness. It is. <laughs> it is. I was trying to explain it to JR. Go ahead, JR. You can jump in. And he was like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you just, you have to look at it and stare at it for a while. I was going to end with some type of reflection as well. Again, like, um, you know, how this was this previous activity effective? Do you understand now how to, you know, to create or to line up um, the um, standards and the anchor standard as well as the supporting standards with the topic and, and objectives of the lesson plan that you are creating? So from I, there, you know, I, I think it's yeah. even fair at this point, and maybe you're going to get to this. Are you going to ask them specifically by the end of this lesson to start picking their standard that they that they want to align with well i wanted to see where felice was going to go from here so oh, okay. well then jr jr is going to go into the oer because i'm going to i'm um, after this re them reflecting on was this helpful kind of thing okay these are places you can go where um the if you have your topic area you can go into oer commons and you can actually put in your topic area and your grade level and you can even put the standard that you're trying to meet and it will give you a lesson um, or lessons or ideas around a lesson that you could create uh, okay that got be. it so it so makes that more sense. It flows in okay so it does make more sense to have them that give them that exposure before they narrow down yep um, Okay, got it. So that's all I have. If someone, if JR, if you want to share your screen with the next section, that's completely up to you. But I hope I was able to get that through fairly quickly. But am I on the right page? Or totally. If, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to take what module one did. And now that they have the personas in their head, now that they have the context, now let's start to get a broad picture and start to design from there. Uh, these are things you have to think about in the whole scope of creating the yep. lesson. And as okay. we're going through this, this is perfect too, and it really reiterating what John was saying. Um, we just now have to have continuity among our um, sections as far as when we're, how we're using the reflections as far as discussions or yeah. how we're using activities or things like that. But that's exactly. like, for me, that's the easy part. It's kind yeah. of- Yeah, I'm gonna um, really try and concentrate on Canvas. I just signed in again, and I'm really gonna look through the assets and see what it is that they have that we can um, start to use. If there's no reflection, maybe there's a discussion, but does it have to be a shared discussion if we just want them to reflect on? Is there some type of a privacy in a discussion? I don't know. There are, um, um, there are quizzes, like a survey you can do as well, which okay. may work for like your one thing where you said yeah. you give them the roster of the things and then ask them to um, to select which one it re re relates to reading or okay. arts or whatever. So that's a possibility too. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and cool. I could the examples that I give in the templates so some of them are, are completed and I would sh I'm going to share them with I mean there's still more language that needs to happen here um, and those we can continue with that example um, and I can give that to Felice and she can then move from there with that as the example. Okay, you know that's part, yep. And so okay. yours will re reference the, we, we, we'll start introducing that whip here. Whatever. Yes, it is. Okay, it's, okay, it's, it's really, they are really close. And um, if I don't think I can pull it up. Um, yeah, it is very close, but I can give you an example of the, um, of the lesson plan if you want to take a look at it here. Let me see. Um, here's, here's just, let me pull this up and share this one instead. Um, did it pop up? Does it, it, did for, it, it did for oh, just a second and then it went away. Okay, wait, let me, I think it's behind. Oh wait, where'd it go? Ah. Here we go. Okay, so you're coming up with just like your topic or your lesson name, your anchor standard and supporting standard or standards. And sometimes there is more than one, depending on what you're doing. The purpose of the le of the instruction or the, the objectives with a couple of, um, you know, um, uh, que uh, questions to help, you know, your thought process, the materials, the time, how long is it going to take? They had warm up in that WIPIA and I was like, mm, but you know, how are you going to get the student's attention just off the bat? Is it a quick question? Is it a polling question? Mm -hmm. um, is it a quick reflection? Um, introducing what, you know, what is the, um, uh, how are you going to introduce this topic to them? And then of course the presentation itself, modeling, how are they going to practice this? And then how are you going to evaluate it? And yeah. then of course some reflection and closure. So I did kind of take a combination of some things, but she can tweak it more. I, it, it's completely fine by me. These were, I thought the main things that needed, 
to when you're just talking about focus and scope, these are the main things that you need to start thinking about and put into your lesson. Yep, absolutely. And, and then, um, as you're saying, Felisa's section really drills down on a lot of the like the practice app opportunities and things like that. So I think it's mm -hmm. perfect. I think it's great. Okay, great. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? And if you guys do need to, to I think Eric had to go. You know, I totally. Okay. Did Jay, JR, do you want to add to this at all? Or are you okay? Is JR there? I think so. He probably stepped away. I'll be right back. He did. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I think he's going to go in then to all of the OER, where you could find things, how you look things up, how you can search them and you know what the OER um, is it what what it is and how it's, its availability and all of that I mean he, yep. I didn't really look at his notes as closely but um, it's got a lot of information <laughs> okay yeah and I think okay. he, yep perfect um, all right so I will stop sharing you can pull your screen back okay. up and then if Felice wants to jump in until he gets back okay um, that's up to her you want to do that, Felice? You want to take us through where, where you're at? Do you want this? Do you want this? Felice, were, were you okay with kind of what was just said? Is that work for you? Does that? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, this was the part I got the dry information, like what I'm gonna teach. But I need activities. I need to spice up my content, and my content is the perfect for have the um, our learners practice their skills. So it totally works it's i'm so sorry like i have been up eight and i'm trying to finish my prospectus and <laughs> it totally works with me it's awesome it sounds cool <laughs> and then um uh, okay now let me tell what i'm doing um i i really haven't done a lot right now it looks like it's a bunch of information but while i am writing this um my parts like deciding how to teach how we, they can create effective, efficient, and engaging instructions, and how they are going to select their instructional activities. I'm kind of trying to come up with the questions, the procedures that they can take away of even their practice, but they can use later, just check them, look at them, and, okay, I, did I do that for activation phase? Did I do that for the demonstration phase? This is what I'm trying to create, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, rather, I mean, they're gonna practice the skills, but I want them to, I want them to live with something. This is I'm just like making up procedures or questions, mm -hmm. or I'm kind of quoting from other people with the appropriate citation, and then um, I'm my uh, I'm I'm gonna not I'm not going to mention the learning outcomes. I I'm I rather change my mind on that. Um, I will more focus on the faces like um but like to the i mean i i listened to a webinar the other day and it's my deal is gonna be like they will have the objective then they will come up with an activity for activation phase and for the demonstration application and integration right now all i need to run that um i need to get the objective from stacy and by the way i checked the uh, um Website, you suggest me, Jennifer. It's almost the same, just that they don't have the integration part. Oh, okay. They got the warm up with the activation, demonstration with the presentation, mm -hmm. and they got the application part as application. Okay. They just don't integration part, so I can totally work with that. Okay, excellent. And then um, I put the mails first principles. I don't want to, I'm, I'm, this is kind of being um, really like, I don't know how to say like being having it's like a curse being an academic I'm trying to not write the whole dissertation <laughs> on minerals and I, I'm trying to stop myself but I can't but right. I'm gonna work on that it's just like the you know right, and right. um so what, what I have to do now I need to get work with Stacy and for the objectives i think she already created them and i need to talk to some of the subject matter experts and get some more specific context okay. for my final activities okay perfect oh this looks wonderful and i don't know if you uh, were you at act felice i don't re 
Call. No, I wasn't. I was last year. Oh, okay. Because I was looking around for you, and I, I didn't know if I missed you. But I, Meryl, David Merrill came by our booth, and so I told him that you were working on this. He was very excited. So it would be really cool. I don't know. If Actually, I know. Um, I'm gonna have a conversation with Anne, which was his student, and he, she was a FSU graduate. I don't know if she was at ACT this semester. You may know her, uh, Anne Mendenhall. Yeah, she was and, there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and she created her her dissertation on Meryl's first principle. We will oh. have a chat on the phone. She's not living here no more, unfortunately. Oh. But we will have a chat on the phone that um, I'm, I have a couple of questions for her. Mm -hmm. So she's like an expert in this field. She will help me with a couple of things. Oh, so excellent. I'm trying to use some other resources rather oh, than just great. books and articles. Yeah, you did a fantastic job in this section. This is exactly what, and, and I love the idea of you dovetailing with um, with uh, Stacy, and then completely by then now, they, the time they get to Jessica's section, you guys have really set the stage, that all for writing the design plan at this point, after they've gone through your activities, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident now about how that's gonna roll into each other. And JR, you're back. <laughs> Did you? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 that's great. Um, we're going long. So I just wondered, did you have any thought, um, anything you wanted to share with us on your OER section? Um, just uh, a, a couple of things have, have evolved in the section. So really, uh, I've put the Creative Commons piece first, and I've just front loaded it with, you might be familiar with this already. If you feel that you are, then you can skip ahead. But, you know, okay. take a look at the reflection questions. Um, and then um giving kind of a time estimate um so any of the articles in that section that i'm linking out to um i just ran them through like a readability thing to see about how long it might take trying to keep the the time down mm -hmm. um for our participants um and the the main focus is still really getting them into the uh, oer repositories and evaluating things so I've put the ribbon on um, an adapted version of the Achieve rubrics, mm -hmm. um, which is now just a, a single point format rubric um, with the benchmark in the center column and then um, providing space for narrative feedback. And so this, I, I sent out a link to Josh and Jessica, I think earlier this week saying, you know, here's kind of what I was thinking for the activity here and wondering if it's going to be useful at those later times as well as our uh, as our participants going to peer review of each other's uh, proposals and like way farther on in module eight where um, they actually have a prototype. Yep, yep. Um, so that, that's been the, the main focus is really um, building that activity and then everything else in terms of content will, will backfill that. And then um, Stacy was mentioning, I'm not sure if you were here, that um, the idea that hers would dovetail to yours by them going out and finding, is that part of an activity you may have? Like yeah, that? that's exactly it. So they, the, it starts with just kind of a, um, you know, why, why open licensing and like why this openness stuff matters. Mm -hmm. um, but then um, there's a list of different repositories available and the activity around that is go out and, and kind of see what is available and uh, what different search engines are available, what does the advanced search feature do, um, and can you find something that uh, is similar to what, what, what your topic and what your learning outcomes um, are looking at. Yep, perfect. And then, yeah, so the, if they could then you know, that's great if they take an existing, for example, K-12 resource and then they yeah. want to re repurpose it for um, an adult audience and then incorporate all the things Felice is talking about and then Stacy has with her lesson plan so we have a, an, you know, an a enhanced module. That's that's great. <laughs> no yeah, need to what I, the real wheel, right? What I was really hoping for the end of our module is that they would have hopefully found something. Like in, in the best case, they might have found something that w was on their topic. And if not, then they've identified the need for it, obviously. Um, but if they did, then they get to take a stab at it with this um, Achieve rubric mm -hmm. and um, kind of see where it needs to, uh, like kind of where it's above the benchmark, where it's below the benchmark. Um, but then sharing that out using the discussion tool and then hopefully at that point um, that acts as a node for, for community development. So if I'm selecting standard, I forget which one Stacy said because there's lots of them, but um, right. you know, if I selected a particular standard in, in language arts, then maybe um, 
there might be a way for me to connect with somebody else who's looking at a similar one or the same one and that um, our participants can engage with each other as well. Yep, I think that's great. And then we can even think through that as well. You know, I wonder if there's a way that we can try to, I don't want to make it forced grouping, but like say we have then like a, you know, a, a cafe or whatever, like a virtual cafe for those that are interested in math or what, you know, something like that where if they wanted to have a breakout discussions and stuff like that, we could, we can think of that as well. Um, yeah, and I was kind of hoping that Canvas might have a, like I need to look at the tool, but I've seen uh, different platforms have uh, search functions mm -hmm. um, for their discussion boards. And so if we provide kind of a framework for what goes in that initial discussion post, then we also have a framework for them to search um, search using that search tool. Yeah, let's look in. Okay, I've got that in my notes too. Okay, this was an action-packed <laughs> hour and 15, 20 minutes. This is great. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry when we went over. I tried to be uh, really good, but um, we had a lot to cover tonight. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know. John, I'll be in contact with you and, and Eric in the next couple days so we can get cranking on yours. Um, and then keep up the communication. If you think of anything, just drop an email um, and we'll, we'll tackle the issue. But thank you guys so much. I, I so appreciate your time and, and we'll see you. Oh, I think we, do we decide on I don't think we decided on this. Does December 2nd work for everybody? Because I think two weeks from now is over the Thanksgiving holiday um, in the U.S. Sorry, Canadians. I think you've already answered <laughs> um, it. And it was glorious. Glorious. Well, hopefully ours will be glorious as well. So does December 2nd work at 6 p.m.? I'll assume yes, unless I hear otherwise. Okay, very good, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great night.